Continuing on from part 1 of this tutorial, let us now look at the devices configuration next. The pick devices config one word is set to use the fosc field option int osc for internal oscillator. The rest of the configuration words field options are set up as displayed here. The next step is to define a few labels needed for the delay subroutines used for debouncing. Using the directive EQU and general purpose memory addresses for each of these labels. Create label count underscore h1, then the directive EQU assigns this label the available general purpose register address 20h. See devices memory map on page 24 of the PIX datasheet. This label, count underscore h1, has now been allocated the general purpose memory address register 20h and forms part of a 2 byte counter value. The h is used to indicate the high or most significant byte of the 2 byte counter value. More about this later. The rest of the labels are created as displayed and N1 to N4 labels are assigned constant values of decimal 130, which is used in the delay routines and explained later. The setup of program origin and interrupt service routine is created next. The org directive is used with hexadecimal address 0 for the reset vector, the address the program begins at after a reset. The ISR vector or interrupt service routine's start address is then created. The ISR start location is hex 4. Although no ISR routines are used in this tutorial, this would be the start address from which any interrupt routines would be created and run from. The internal oscillator default frequency of 500 kHz is to be adjusted for 4 MHz. This is accomplished by using the OSCON register and altering the IRCF bits within the OSCON register. If we look at page 76 of the datasheet for the OSCON register, the IRCF bits are located from bit 3 to 6 and the available frequencies are listed below. The default after a reset or power up is the highlighted 500 kHz with a bit value of 0, 1 for the IRCF bits. The 4 MHz bit value is 1101. The adjusted OSCON register will be covered later during the simulation and testing section. The devices ports A and C initialization is up next. Both port A and C mode setup for digital mode for input and output. Ensuring after a reset the default analog mode is changed to digital mode using these lines of code. Next, port A direction is set up. Bits 0 to 4 for inputs and the fifth bit is set up for output for RA5 to turn LED on or off. All of port C bits are set up inputs and are not used in this project. This project uses two of the 12 available pins and three pins are used for programming and debugging RA0, RA1 and RA3. The remaining unused pins have been set up for digital mode and their direction are for inputs. This tutorial will use internal pull-ups to maintain a high state for these unused pins. The first step is to clear bit 7 of the option register. This bit is the global weak pull up enable bit. When cleared to 0, each of port A and C weak pull up bits can be individually enabled or disabled. So, with the 7th bit of the option reg now cleared, the weak pull up bits of port A can be individually enabled. Using the bank cell directive to select the memory bank 4 holding the weak pull up port A special function register. The next instruction, move literal value, 
loads the hex value 1F into the working register. The following instruction then moves the working register value, now 1F, into the weak pull-up port A file register. When this last instruction is executed, the weak pull-up port A register is loaded with the value hex 1F. This value has the first five bits 0 to 4 loaded with 1s and the sixth bit is loaded with a 0. The first five bits have the weak pull-up port A bits enabled for the digital inputs and the sixth bit is disabled for the output on RA5 for the LED control. The same process is followed for port C with all weak pull-up port C bits enabled for pins set up for digital and direction inputs. All maintain a high state as indicated here. Port initializing will continue in part 3 of this tutorial. The use of the Picket 4 to demonstrate how to debug the project, testing each line of code so far. The Snap programmer may also be used. For those of you who wish to follow along without either of these programmers or an actual PIC device, there will be a part where we use the simulator to emulate the code and test functionality. The use of a stopwatch function to measure the delay routine periods will be included in this part of tutorial. So be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates on the next tutorials as they become available.